Hey you guys, welcome to day 10 of our March Madness practice questions. Let's get into these questions for today, but you know I always like to give a disclaimer before we get started. For those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and I'm the founder and CEO of the nursing studio. I design my courses, review material, and other tools such as these videos to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with being successful on boards as well as in practice. I always like to give the disclaimer because we have to remember there's no absolutes and medicines, but we treat on a patient by patient basis. And with this, things vary. And I just want to make y'all clear and understand that I designed these with the guidelines that are currently on the boards, what's on the exams, right? So if you are in doubt or a question where it may vary what you may be doing in practice, if you're watching these videos and you're actually practicing, that is what this is for. And when I do practice videos, then I will say, the specifics for that, but I'll always differentiate. But if we're doing practice questions, I am giving you what is currently being tested, okay? All right, so let's get into these questions. All right, all right, all right. Question number one states, a patient presents to the office today with complaints of excruciating scrotal pain. On exam, print signed is negative. Based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Is it A, epididymitis? B, prostatitis, C, testicular torsion, or D, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments. All right, you know, I always tell you guys to read the stem of the question first to ensure that you're even answering what they're asking. You know, we start to create our own storylines that can sometimes uh, make careless mistakes. So I'll say, read that stem, slow down and make sure that you understand what's being asked. So here, the stem of the question states, based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? So you know, I always tell you, if they're asking you how to diagnose, you need to go look back at the assessment. How is the patient um, presenting and what have we established on exam? So thinking of your subjective and objective, the patient is coming to the office complaining of excruciating scrotal pain. The nurse on exam notes a negative print sign. So, with these combination, what, what are you thinking? Um, is it epididymitis? No, we wouldn't pick epididymitis. Although they do have scrotal pain um, and due to the epididymis being inflamed, with this, the print sign is actually positive, right? So you can eliminate that because the print sign is negative. Um, is it B, prostatitis? Nope. That doesn't... This is not even the same presentation, right? C, testicular torsion. Yes, that's where you should go. Um, testicular torsion, you know, this is the actual twisting of the spermatic cord. And where that is decreasing the blood flow, this will cause that sudden extreme pain. And it's actually an emergent case that requires emergency surgery um, to prevent any necrosis due to that decreased blood flow. But the, the key here is that that print sign is negative. Remembering that when we're conducting this, uh, print sign, you will elevate the testicles. And if it's positive, the pain will be relieved. If it's negative, they will still have this, uh, excruciating pain. Okay. So here, C, testicular torsion. Next, the nurse practitioner has diagnosed the patient today with epididymitis. While discussing treatment options with the patient, the patient mentions a cephalosporin and fluoroquinolone allergy. How should the nurse practitioner treat? Is it A, doxycycline, B, ciprofloxacin, C, ceftriaxone, or D, augmentin? Take a moment and tell me what you think in the comments. All right, you guys, the stem of the question states, how should the nurse practitioner treat? So just like I tell you with diagnosing, right? If we're trying to figure out the diagnosis, we have to take it back and figure out the assessment, right? Seeing how they say their, uh, their signs and symptoms and what their chief complaint is, their subjective, and then also the objective on our assessment, what we are seeing and what we're uh, noting on exam, right? For diagnosis. So if you're looking for how to treat, you have to look at how they're presenting, what we're diagnosing, what we have evaluated, right? We're throwing all of those things that I point out to you guys to know on each diagnosis so that you could uh, apply this appropriately, right? So let's take it back. So we've already jumped to that 
the diagnosis portion because it lets us know that the nurse practitioner diagnoses them with epididymitis. So based off of our last question, we can easily say that, hey, this person must have had scrotal pain, Prinsai must have been positive, right? Assessment findings, diagnosis here. They've diagnosed with epididymitis, but now we're going through that planning uh, evaluation stage, right? So we're discussing and planning for treatment options. And so as we're discussing this, the patient is saying that, hey, they have a uh, allergy to cephalosporins as well as fluoroquinolones. So then you need to think through your mind, what are treatment options for epididymitis, right? And so if you know, um, let me go through these questions and I'll get, I mean, the answer choices and then I'll explain that. Would you go A, doxycycline? Yes, that's the answer, but let's keep going. Ciprofloxacin? You know you can take that out because that's a fluoroquinolone, right? They have an allergy to fluoroquinolones. Floxacin, the ending, fluoroquinolone. Uh, ceftriaxone, that's a cephalosporin. You can take that out, see? And then augmentin, that's not even one of the uh, treatment options. Um, okay, but the answer choice is A, doxycycline. But knowing here that you need to be aware that those uh, cephalosporins and doxy, um are those classic treatment options. Options Fluoroquinolones are also in that process of things that you can use to treat with, but ceftriaxone, doxy, and levofloxacin are like those three uh, things that you clearly commonly see uh, for the treatment of epididymitis. Um, again, ceftriaxone is one of those uh, top ones along with doxycycline, but due to that cephalosporin allergy, we can eliminate that and we're going to go with a doxycycline. So again, that is going through that process to make sure that you uh, truly know all of the steps in the treatment and planning and how to adjust based off of this person, this particular um, patient's personal history and allergies. All right. Question number three for today. A mother presents to the office with her one-year-old daughter, stating her daughter has broken out into a rash all over her torso. She states that her daughter was sick a few days ago, but has been doing well since. Upon exam, the nurse practitioner knows a macular papilla rash to the one-year-old's torso. How should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Is it A, rubiola, B, roseola, C, rubella, or D, Kawasaki disease? Take a moment and tell me what you think in the comments. All right, the stem of the question states, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Again, you know we got to take it back and see how they present it, right? So the mother has brought this one-year-old in um, and states that her daughter has broken out into a rash all over her torso. She did state that the daughter was sick a few days ago, but she's been fine, no other symptoms right now, just this rash. So on exam, the nurse practitioner notes a macular papilla rash over the daughter. And so then you want to think about this presentation. One, this is the thing, with the pediatric antagonistary rashes, you know, there's there's so many. It's the all all the R's, the violas, the rubiola, roseola, rubella, you know, all the things. So just knowing how to differentiate those. So let's go through it. A would it be rubiola? No, you know, we can eliminate that. Um, rubiola is the actual measles. We know it's preventative, right? Because you can have the vaccination. Um, but coplic spots um, and the more blotchy rash is the key identifier for that one. Is it B, roseola? Yes, it is. Roseola classic presentation is a macular papilla rash. But the key classic thing to this is they get this rash after they've had a high fever um, like a few days ago. So they'll say, you know, that the child may have been sick. May have had a high fever, been fine, and then bam, they end up with this macular papilla rash all over them. Um, and so I was actually doing a one-on-one -on -one session with someone the other day, and we were just running through some stuff because she had a question on these rashes. Um, I was trying to find a way to get her to retain roseola. And so um, Brittany's brilliance, I say, think of the S in roseola for sick because they've been sick before the high fever. So you can separate that from rubiola and roseola, right? 
and then rubiola the bee they have those blotchy spots those blotchy uh rashes with the complex spots and then rubella y'all know if y'all have watched my video if not go check out the uh pediatric and take material rash uh videos where i break this stuff down but a rubella i say think of a bell like you know the bell that you can actually ring in your hand like old school bell and i know this is far-fetched but again you know this when i say britney's brilliance is something weird that i think about and where my brain goes but uh, a bell that you can actually ring um you know the top of it is smaller and then it widens at the base right well with rubella the classic presentation of this is that that macular papillar rash spreads from the face first down to the trunk right and so think about uh the shape of a bell the bell is small like the person's face and then the trunk extends out like the base of the bell that's how the macular papillar rash goes if it ever says that it started with them face to the trunk, they're they're talking rubella. And then Kawasaki disease, you know, that's the one that's a bit different. Um, this is where they'll have that vasculitis or it can lead to vasculitis. They'll present with that strawberry tongue as a key um, symptom uh, for this. So just being aware of those classic presentations. But go check out the video so you'll see the breakdown of all of those rashes, the treatments, etc. If this is an area that you struggle all right, you guys, as always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But meet us back here. Meet me back for more questions. We're doing it all month long. Or to, to go check out any other review material to kind of help with your studies. If you need any of our other resources like one-on-one -on -one sessions, any of our online courses or review materials like our review book, uh, just give us a call at the nursing studio at 803 Four hundred six eight six four, or shoot us an email at the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. Look forward to working with you. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.